At the last World Economic Forum held in the Swiss town of Davos last January, economic experts and political analysts conveyed that the financial crisis that began in the United States in 2008 and dragged on through worrying spikes in several European countries is close to an end. However, the Eurozone is still suffering through record unemployment and a bleak economic environment. A way out of the crisis seems to be very distant. In Italy, the socio-political situation is rather alarming. While public debt amounts to over 2 trillion euros, unemployment rate has reached 12%, with almost 4 out of 10 young Italians unemployed, Eurozone's highest rate. Italy's fiscal burden has reached on average 55% of taxpayers' incomes in 2012, ranking first in the world. La situazione che abbiamo di fronte è rimane una situazione di grandissima Italy is in a fragile situation that cannot continue. The country's economic situation is still serious after more than a decade of stagnation. We have a huge public debt to deal with and must steer the economy out of recession. Italians are fed up with political games and I will put all I have to help restore faith in politics. Negligent and slack national and local governments, greedy merchant banks and financial institutions have often been accused of collusion and deemed as the major culprits of the present dramatic situation in Italy. This said, this collusion between public administrations and the financial system would not have been as effective without the tacit support of the media. The reputation of Italian journalists has continually been questioned these days. An increasing number of Italians have lost respect for journalism and lost faith in the news media. Very often Italian journalists are told by politicians what to do. Don't trust journalists. They are strongly influenced by politicians. I don't trust journalists much. I tend to often double-check what they say. When you talk about a value crisis, it's the, the roots of this uh, dysfunctional political and communication and consequentially media system. And of course, when, as it's sometimes referred to, the tsunami, the tidal wave of the financial crisis hit such a fragile structure, it had a very deep impact on not just business, not just jobs, but also the media, the quality of information in this country. Controversial issues of public importance should be presented by our mainstream media in a more equitable and balanced way, but unfortunately, media in Italy are not at the service of the citizens. Journalists have stopped investigating on issues involving the dominant powers that be. According to those who are critical of the current media system, the intertwining between politics and journalists is one of the dysfunction of Italian journalism. They see Italy as a country where journalism is completely tied to power, where every journalist has been accepted because of a politician's recommendation, and to that politician, in one way or another, that journalist has to respond. The link between politics and journalism is beyond dispute. A simple fact can illustrate the situation. The high number of national press agencies present in Italy is the best proof to the fact. While other European countries have one or two press agencies each, in Italy we have ten of them, and they all receive public funding. The amount of declarations by politicians' statements published by such agencies cannot go unnoticed. These news stories often include remarks that could be easily scrapped. All 945 members of parliament in Italy have the right to start up their own political newspaper or magazine in which they can publish their opinions and inform the public about their parliamentary activity. Each of these publications would be entitled to receive public funding as a right designated for Member of Parliament in order to communicate with the society. 
ma i fondi che ricevevano i grandi giornali. Well, uh, yes, we are among those newspapers that receive public subsidies, but even the most famous Italian daily newspapers, such as Corriente della Sera and La Repubblica, commercial newspapers, receive indirect public subsidies. Like in other Western countries, in Italy there are significant public subsidies for the press. Since 1987, Italian party-affiliated organs, privately owned newspapers and magazines, have received over 1 billion euros of public money. However, Italy's public subsidies system greatly differs from those in countries such as France, Germany, the United Kingdom and the United States. To create a paper with party affiliation, it is sufficient to have the support of just two parliament members. This system allowed the flourish of inexistent newspapers that are impossible to find at the newsstands. Furthermore, a 2001 reform introduced by former Premier Silvio Berlusconi gives the possibility to publishing companies of transforming themselves into cooperatives, thereby giving them access to subsidies. For example, in 2003, the pro-Berlusconi newspaper Libero officially became the party organ of the Movimento Monarchico Italiano, the Italian royal movement, although it has no parliament representation. This enabled it to benefit from over 5 million euros of state subsidies. Furthermore, Libero was later transformed into a cooperative receiving over 40 million euros in public funds between 2003 and 2009. Finanziamento pubblico ai giornali. The subsidies are now viewed as a wasteful abuse of taxpayers' money to support a declining industry with limited readership. Recently, there have been significant subsidy cuts to private owned newspapers, and only party organs keep receiving public funds. Will newspapers be able to survive? The Italian press received subsidies for about 120 million euros in 2012 plus the so-called indirect subsidies, such as VAT waivers on copies sold by subscription and reduced postal delivery costs and telephone rates. Despite the great amount of public funds granted to the written press, there are far less print media readers in Italy in comparison to other European countries. According to a research study published by Oxford University in 2011, while Italy scores third in the amount of newspaper subsidies per inhabitant in Europe, it has by far the lowest number of sold copies, 103 for every 1,000 printed copies, compared to 152 in France, 283 in Germany and 307 in the United Kingdom. This means that many papers relying on public subsidies do not try to sell more copies nor improve their distribution. What happens to the thousands of copies that are not sold every month then? They get thrown in the garbage chute. The criteria used in hiring journalists is also questionable. Political affiliation takes precedence over talent. Their goal is to secure the funds and distribute jobs to political affiliated journalists. Public subsidies are used by politicians to treat the press. Because in the past 20-30 years the press, the major newspapers have become an arena, an open space for political debates. Politicians see political journalists as their deputies. I found it unacceptable that journalists have become far too close with politicians and that investigative journalism has practically died in Italy. After decades of mollycoddling and welfareism by the Italian state, last year the late technocratic government led by Mario Monti introduced cuts in public subsidies for the press, with budget allocations dropping from 170 million in 2012 to 53 million euros in 2013. As a result, up to 100 newspapers and magazines titles in Italy are facing closure.
questo finanziamento. In general, state subsidies can have positive impact on the news industry as they safeguard media pluralism and can help newspapers through difficult times. On the other hand, dependence on state support poses clear freedom of the press related questions, as the line between financing and influencing can be very thin and it risks affecting the system by altering the market balance in comparison to newspapers which rely entirely on advertising and readership revenues. The only Italian newspaper known for being independent is Il Fatto Quotidiano, a daily created in September 2009. On its front page and on its website, Il Fatto swings that it is the only Italian newspaper not receiving state funds and claiming to be truly independent. So far, Il Fatto has been extremely critical of Silvio Berlusconi's party, but also of left-wing politicians, thus proving to be free of constraints. El Fatto does not receive public subsidies. We do not want to have loads and masters. We want to feel free to keep our readers, who are also our editors, informed on what really happens in Italy. Some newspaper titles have banks and big financial groups among their shareholders, and they are often prevented from telling the truth to their readers. It comes as no surprise that in a country where about half of the households do not have a fast internet connection, ranking 22nd in the Eurozone for internet penetration rate, and only 20% of citizens read newspapers and magazines, television plays a dominant role. Rai State Television and Silvio Berlusconi-owned Mediaset commercial channels dominate Italy's TV market and are a powerful political tool. 80% of the population is said to rely on television for its daily news, the highest percentage in the European Union. I keep myself informed by watching TV and listening to the radio, but mostly I follow TV news. I follow the news on TV and newspapers. TV is more direct, so... Rai State Television and Radio Service has also long been controlled by Italian politicians. As a rule, the political party in power has more say over what is or is not transmitted by the public broadcaster. A specific term, the word lottizzazione, exists to designate the interrelationship between Rai and the party system. It refers to the sharing of positions of power on the part of political parties within Rai. During media tycoon Silvio Berlusconi's last spell as Prime Minister, between 2008 and 2011, Rai 1 was controlled by the centre-right majority, Rai 2 was under the influence of Berlusconi's ally federalist Northern League, and Rai 3 programming was controlled by the centre-left opposition. Che il giornalismo è al servizio della politica. Journalism is at the service of politics in Italy. It's as easy as that. While journalism used to be investigative some time ago, lately it is just a form of support to politicians' activities. We are the mouthpiece of politicians. I was once covering the inauguration of a magnificent building in northern Italy and one of the ministers of the time told me he wanted to make a political statement. I replied that I had to check if he could with my superior. But the minister's spokesperson warned me, let the minister do the declaration, it will be aired anyway. Ties with politicians are not the only deficiency affecting Italian journalism. There is another form of control that many regard even more threatening to media independence and pluralism. Very often, Italian major media groups have an evident conflict of interest as their shareholders include different banks, insurance and industrial companies that many believe can set the agenda of the newsrooms. The most evident example of such conflicts of interest is Silvio Berlusconi and his media empire. Almost half the jobs in the sector are in the gift of one company, uh, Silvio Berlusconi's media set. The truth is half of them are working for him and the other half think they might work for him one day. 
Berlusconi's main company, Mediaset, operates three national television channels covering half of the national television sector. His group employs about 6,000 people. Berlusconi is also the owner of Italy's biggest publishing company, Mondadori, and Italy's biggest advertising company, Publitalia. Great concern has been often expressed over the concentration of media ownership in his hands. The media magnate served as Prime Minister three times for a total of about 10 years between 1994 and 2011, exerting tight control over both public broadcaster Rai and its channels and creating a de facto media monopoly in the Eurozone's third largest economy. But then we go beyond Berlusconi and the rest is pretty weak too in terms of guaranteeing pluralism and the advantages of pluralism. And Italy is extremely low in the rankings of freedom of the press. Indeed, the 76-year-old media tycoon is just the tip, a big tip, of a gigantic iceberg. Conflicts of interest concern all major Italian media groups and news organizations, including RCS, L'Espresso Editorial Group, Fininvest, Caltagirone Editore and many others. RCS is one of the major media corporations in Italy. It controls several newspapers such as Il Corriere della Sera, that averages almost 3 million readers daily, La Gazzetta dello Sport, 4.2 million readers, and the free newspaper City. The major shareholders of RCS include banks such as Mediobanca SPA and Intesa San Paolo Bank SPA, as well as industrial companies such as Italy's major car maker Fiat and the world's fifth largest tie manufacturer Pirelli. Did the fact that RCS is owned partly by Fiat make Il Corriere della Sera less objective on whatever issue concerning the famous car company? In past years, Fiat has transferred the production of a significant amount of its cars in Poland and Serbia, where labor cost is cheaper, leaving thousands of workers in Italy in a pit of economic oblivion. Some feel these events were covered in a partial way by this media. It often happens that newsrooms do not publish a particular piece of news because it goes against the interest of their shareholders. Who controls newspapers? Which companies and which entrepreneurs in particular? Who are shareholders? Finding this sort of information should be easy for readers, but unfortunately, Italian media hardly knows what the word transparency means. Nella stampa ci sono uh, interessi economici, culturali, ideologici. In the media sector, there are lots of economic interests at stake, that's beyond dispute. I am personally keen to fight against these interests in the name of the ethical journalism, but I'm afraid that the price to pay would be too high. Either we introduce a new tough law on conflict interests dismantling the current system and forcing lots of newspapers to close, or we introduce state journalism with the media serving the needs of authorities. But if you go look at local media, for example, you find a preponderance of companies who are in the public procurement. Uh, so their, their finances there are in the gift of politicians, and you find a lot of companies with interest in healthcare and construction and transportation. Those are the ones who invest in the print media in this country. Not because it makes money, but it because it enables them to do deals with politicians. In addition to the pressure associated with political, financial and industrial conflicts of interest, Italian journalists are subject to intimidation of all sorts. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe recently condemned the sending of a parcel bomb to the Turin-based headquarters of the daily newspaper La Stampa. However, the event at La Stampa is only the latest in a string of cases where journalists have been attacked and intimidated in Italy. It is a worrying trend that communication experts say needs to be promptly addressed by the Italian authorities. In the 2013 World Freedom Press Index, Italy ranks 57th, trailing Hungary, 
a state that in recent years has introduced a series of controversial media legislative measures and that has been often accused of serious violation of media freedom of expression. Reporters Without Borders, the France-based international NGO that annually compiles and publishes the Press Freedom Index, explained that Italy's poor ranking is due to the fact that the country has failed to address the issue of its media freedom violation and, above all, because of a lack of political will. Business, economic and political interests within the press favor censorship, thus destroying press freedom, Reporters Without Borders said. If you choose to report on certain sensitive issues, you will have to deal uh, with the consequences of your choice. What is the legislator waiting for to intervene? This situation suits all political parties and social partners. However, nobody has ever done anything. The level of intimidation Italy's press is submitted to has skyrocketed and as a consequence nobody does investigative journalism anymore in our country. Personally, I have been lucky enough to work as a journalist in the fashion sector, a sector that politics regard as non-sensitive. Journalists are not only exposed to threats coming from various interest groups, but also from organized crime. Reporters Without Borders and other organizations that promote freedom of the press have recently warned of the grip of mafia gangs on the media, which it says forces many journalists to tread warily. Italian journalists have been targeted by the mafia for more than 45 years in their efforts to expose the syndicate's criminal activities. Investigative journalism cost the lives of nine journalists in past decades. The permanent anti-mafia observatory Oxygen for Information recorded over 1,300 cases of Italian journalists who live and walk under threat since 2006. Mafia, Camorra and other organized criminal groups in more general terms have deeply affected Italian journalism. We have already recorded 130 cases of journalists who have received threats since the beginning of 2013. Many journalists were killed in Italy simply because they were doing their job. However, there is also another kind of intimidation that comes from the law itself. In Italy, a journalist can be jailed for expressing his opinions. Defamation has yet to be decriminalized. A journalist who is being sued often lives in fear for a long time. The trial can last for over 10 years and the newspapers are too fragile to protect them. The most worrying problem in Italy is that libel suits are used to pressurize the media and our parliament does nothing to change the situation. Our newspaper, which relies mostly on the number of sold copies only, has to deal with dozens of multi-million libel suits. That is how they try to stop us. And yes, it is unbelievable that journalists in Italy face jail time if they do not correct the content deemed detrimental to a person's image. Other pressures affecting Italian journalism also come from within the profession itself. In particular, being a female journalist in the Italian male-dominated media sector is extremely difficult. Even today, it is not uncommon that women who are willing to access the world of journalism are asked for sexual favors to obtain a job or be offered simple apprenticeship. Sexism rules. It totally does, unfortunately. And all the fights that we women have led to obtain recognition of our intellectual capacities are becoming vain. Sadly, we still live in a society dominated by men. I was offered some work in exchange for sexual favors, but I refused. It is said that all practices based on sexual matters still rule in our sector. Finally, journalists do not have a choice when it comes to being associated with a professional corporation. Although the economic and institutional crisis deepens and many voices are asking Italy to ease access to the professional labor market by abolishing the system of cooperation, in order to work as a journalist, one must belong to the Ordine dei Giornalisti, the order of journalists that is run by the National Press Federation. 
There are about 100,000 journalists in Italy, but the number could be much higher if the journalistic professions were not regulated by the Ordine dei Giornalisti, ODG. In Europe, uh, the professional non exists. In other European countries, journalists set up their own associations and unions. In Italy, the situation is more complex. The ODG was created by law in 1963, and in more than 50 years, nothing has changed. Although many criticize the ODG, journalists still want it because most Italians are in favor of a state of safety net that helps them when they are in troubles. It must be said that unemployment subsidies and other welfare benefits apply only to professional journalists. Independent, effective and transparent journalism is the fundamental ingredient for a healthy democracy and a functioning society. The media are the essential watchdog of power in a society with the duty of reporting abuses and violations of citizens' rights. The lack of independence of Italian media is one of the many factors of injustice and mistrust of national institutions. It is essential to empower independent media in order to correct political institutions as well as to appease the volatile society in Italy.